Are we, everyone ready? Here yeah. we go. You want him to go down? Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to leave that up to you if you want to wake up. Send him in in front of us. Good morning. That's always one of my favorite parts when she does the little snappy. Um, announcements this morning. Are there announcements among us? I see Jen with her hand raised. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Um, just a quick reminder, as all of you hopefully have noticed up there, that we are having our combined services with um, HCC on the on July 14th, uptown in Haskins, and on July 9th at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7, the outreach committee will be meeting here at church, and we will start planning for our new Sunday school year and hopefully get a lot of the programs set up for throughout the year. So if you have any ideas, would like to see something done different with outreach, would like to see us support a different group than what we've been supporting, or try something new, please let Stacy, Rachel, myself, Marilyn, um, Beth Fowler, who else is on committee, I know I'm missing, Pam Vollmer, Kathy, I'm looking, Brenda. <laughs> so let any of us know, okay? Thank you. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I won't, I won't forget. <laughs> I would have if she wouldn't have just said something, but now that she did, I won't. So I'm going to let, oh, I got another, Tom. What? I'm going to do it from right here. Okay. You're welcome. So I know Vacation Bible School is coming up in a couple of weeks. I think three weeks probably from today, I think. You're right. Is that the date? Or two weeks from today, maybe? July 15th. July 15th. Two weeks. In two weeks, combined Bible school. Do we have a, I need a, do we have a current kid count? The last number I heard was 32. Is it up from that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now it's 30. That's good. 35. So I know that's coming up. Um, let me see. Quilt. 
Most of them are up here as, the, as it rolls through. And I wanted to highlight this, this parish prayer list at gmail.com. Um, hopefully some of you have noticed that the prayer list has been reset in the, in the newsletter. Um, we're doing that and we instituted that particular email to make it easier to track and to take names on and off the list, right? I mean, it's, it's fairly easy. We fairly easy to get them on the list, but then we weren't having people come back to us and say they've, they're healed, they're, you know, as some to take them back off the list. So this is going to be a, something we're trying to make that process a little smoother. And I think we have a prayer list coordinator, right? Do we have a prayer list coordinator? She's looking at me, but she's looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about, so. We do? Maybe? Marilyn? Yes? Okay. Yes, well, we're working on that. One step at a time. One step at a time. So I'm also told we have a, this week we have a couple, we're going to sing because we have a, nope, too, too late now. Jen told me, so. So I would like to ask this fine couple to stand up because we're going to sing them happy birthday because they both have birthdays this week. Sorry, Charlie. That's the way it works. <laughs> Two birthdays this week. But I do not lead singing, so that's not doesn't happen. So if somebody would like to take the lead on that, I'd be more than happy to join in. No, I'm weak. Weak. Birthday to you. Happy birthday. There we go. Happy birthday to you. Are there any more announcements before I invite the children forward? Any more announcements? Okay, I would at this time. The children would like to roll on up here. Well, oh, hey y'all, huh? There's barely any today. Well, where are y'all? Are they all sleeping in? They knew I. They knew I was coming. There you go. Finally, my evil plan is working. Well, hello, good morning. Here comes one running in from the back. She must have not got the memo. So I have a question. I'm going to read a Bible story today to this group out here, but I want to talk to you about it too, okay? There's a woman in, in the Bible, in the book of Mark, that's really sick. And she's been sick for a long time, 12 years the Bible says so. Are any of you 12? No, no not, yet. not yet. So she, this woman in the, in the Bible has been sick longer than you all been alive. That's a long time, right? And you know what she does? Yeah. Guess, guess what she does? Guess who she goes to? Jesus, right? It's an easy guess. This isn't a hard game that we play. All, you know what she does? She, she comes up behind Jesus, and all she does is touch Jesus' cloak, the robe that he's wearing. She just touches his cloak, thinking, if I just get close to Jesus, that I'll be healed. Okay, and guess what happens to her? She was healed. Just like that. In the, in the blink of an eye, Jesus doesn't even know it, right? He doesn't even see her coming. He just knows that somebody touched him. And he has a conversation with her. <laughs> I'll let you go. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so she gets healed just by getting close to Jesus. Okay? And that's a big message, isn't it? That if we just get close to him, we can be healed. So I wanted to talk about three ways that we get close to Jesus. Do you know a way, a way that you can get close to Jesus? Because she, she was living with Jesus, right? So Jesus was right there where she could touch his coat, right? How do we get close to Jesus today? We walk. We watch? No, we walk. You walk close to Jesus? Yeah. Okay, you can walk with Jesus, I guess. That's a pretty good answer. How about, how about what if I do this? 
What does this mean? Pray. We pray, right? That's one of the ways we can talk to Jesus, right? As we pray to him. And to Jesus, right? When we pray. What's, what's another way we can get close to Jesus? I'll give you a hint. The Bible. The Bible. Right? When we pray, we get to talk to Jesus. And when we read the Bible, Jesus gets to talk to us, right? So that's how we get, those are two ways we get close to Jesus. And you know what I carry in my pocket to always feel close to Jesus? The cross. The cross. That's right. This reminds me that I don't have to work to get close to Jesus, right? I don't have to walk anywhere. I don't have to, I don't have to read the Bible because Jesus is close to me, right? Jesus chooses. Right? Praying and reading the Bible are things that I choose, but Jesus chooses all of you. And where does he live? Right here, right? That's right. That's right. So that's how you got get close to Jesus sometimes. You all got one of these, right? Yeah. Yeah? Do you know where yours is? Yeah. Yeah? It's at our house. It's at your house? Yeah. Well, I carry mine in my pocket because sometimes I forget how close Jesus really is. So I carry this to remind me, okay? So will you pray with me? Will you get close to Jesus with me in prayer? Yeah? Heavenly Father, we thank you for children. We thank you that your promises, that you are in their hearts. Help them to always remember that you are with them and that they are close to you. And all they have to do is reach out for you and you will be there. Love you and we praise you. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming today. You want that? You want to carry that? There you go. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't need that. I would ask that you all stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. If you would join us for praise to the Lord Almighty.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning is from Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 through 33. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 30. Congregation, please respond reading the bold. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. 
While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. The second reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord, Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this manner I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading this morning is from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. This is the Holy Gospel as recorded by Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. 
why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with them and went in there where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was about 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning again. I know I ask this question a lot at the risk of repeating myself week after week. How's our faith doing this morning? Smooth sailing? Uh, as sunny as the day is outside? Um, or do we still have some wind and rain hanging around? Last week, Pastor Meg and I um, talked about storms, about a particular storm that had the disciples fearful for their very survival, a storm that once again led Jesus to declare, do you still have no faith? Pastor and I talk a lot about faith, uh, and we pray that, that the good news that we communicate is that God is in the middle of each moment, in the smooth sailing in, in the moments of rough seas, God is in the middle of all of that. We talk faith, and we talk love, and we talk about the reign of God, about the Holy Spirit. Um, I think we, um, it's, it's the message of the gospel, right? It's the good news, but I think that we talk about it uh, so often because it's sometimes so easy to forget when we walk out that door, isn't it? We talk, so we talk about it again and again. So we, so we remember, right? We do this, a lot of is remembering. And this week's gospel message again talks about faith and healing. We hear about the healing power of Jesus in two particular stories. And again, we see his power with just a touch and a word. And again, I ask you, how is our faith? Do we trust Jesus and in his divine power enough just to want to be closer to him? Just to move a little bit closer? It seems that often we come to Jesus in crisis, um, just as in today's stories. Desperate times have this way of driving us to the feet of Jesus. Um, illness. Our own sometimes, or illnesses of those that we love, that those can leave us feeling desperate for help. Um, and no matter how our faith is doing at any particular moment, our hearts want to believe that Jesus can help. Right? That's why we go to Jesus in these times of crisis, because our hearts believe he can help. Scripture does say that he is our present help in time of trouble. It's about trusting in who Jesus is and his promise that he is always with us. And this is an invitation to turn to him. To all, we always have that invitation to turn to Jesus. And it's about who Jesus is, right? It's not about who we are. It's never about who we are. It's always about who Jesus is. It's not about our worthiness, is it? None of us are worthy. None of us. Um, the woman that approached Jesus wasn't worthy, right? Unclean for 12 years, Scripture says. In her culture, she had no business being there, certainly not to be touching even the hem of his garment. 
She approached him, Scripture says, in silence, not interested in being noticed, in taking any of his time. She just wanted to be made well. Um, and that told her just getting close to Jesus would be enough. Just If I can just touch his garment, that will be enough to make me well. Is this how we approach Jesus? Is this how some of us approach Jesus? With trepidation, um, in our unworthiness, just wanting to be made well. I can't help but no notice in Scripture that she comes to Jesus anonymously, but comes away being called daughter. An encounter with Jesus changes us. Her encounter changed her relationship with Jesus. Jairus is different. He's a synagogue leader. He throws himself publicly at the feet of Jesus, not in silence, definitely noticed, on behalf of another, his daughter, but with the same need, a need for the healing presence of Jesus in the middle of the storm, the very same needs that we have. And Jesus isn't concerned about who they were. He's not concerned about who we are. Jesus wants our faith to draw us closer. That is what is going to make us well. Um, this, this seed of faith placed in our hearts that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, nurtured by the Holy Spirit, apprehends us and draws us closer to the living God. Is our faith so that we are compelled to come closer to Jesus? That's a question we need to ask every day about our faith. Does it draw us closer? Does it compel us to go to Jesus? I did want to talk a little bit about one commonality that I noticed about these two very different people. And this was that they both, Scripture says, heard about Jesus. They heard about him. I don't know exactly what they heard, but they both came looking for his help in their extreme times of need. That tells me a little something about what they may have heard about this Jesus. They had both been witnessed to, and that's so important for us to talk about because that's a part we're all called to play in God's story. Our witness to the power of God to what he can do, what he has done in our lives. I imagine Jairus kneeling before Jesus, pleading what must have been in his heart as Jesus stops to engage with this woman. How agonizing that must have been for him in that moment. But because Jesus does stop and take the time to minister to this woman, guess what I noticed? Jairus gets to witness firsthand as Jesus heals her. Gets, he's on his knees in front of Jesus as Jesus heals this woman. How much stronger is his faith in this personal witness? What we've witnessed, what have we witnessed that strengthens our faith, faith like that? These are stories that we need to be telling what we do and what we say about these things might just be what grows someone else's faith enough to lead them to Jesus. Imagine Jairus again after witnessing Jesus instantly, immediately, says Scripture several times, heal this woman of her illness. And then they tell him that his daughter has died and to leave Jesus be. And then to hear Jesus say to him, do not fear, only believe. You all here at St. Paul are part of my witness. Um, and I talk about you and your faith a lot. A lot. An ice cream social last summer to benefit a family that needs a touch of Jesus. 
a quilting group that sends love through Lutheran World Relief to people in need around the world. I talk about young people here absolutely on fire to know who Jesus is. I'm now told there's 35 young people and counting for Vacation Bible School. I was also, it was also relayed to me that many of these names are names that we don't necessarily recognize. Okay, They're not our, necessarily our own youth. But maybe, too, they've heard about Jesus here. We have to hear about Jesus. Two days after I was officially called here, I was able to witness the power of the Holy Spirit bring a family in crisis together in faith. All of this is a, is a witness about who Jesus is and who we are in Christ Jesus. What kind of statements do our witness make? Looking back through the pages of a devotional, the one that I like to read from, the Billy Graham devotional, looking back through the pages, I discovered this little small piece of paper I use as a bookmark. Um, and I wrote it. It was written in June of 2005 as I came away from being a guest at the Mountaintop Great Banquet. And this is what I wrote on the last day. Does the man I am today say the things you need to say? That's all this paper says. A little conversation between me and my Savior. One of the reasons that I'm here today the answer in 2005 was no. No. I don't say the things, Jesus, that you want me to say. I'm done with that. Done. I wasn't that guy. I'm called to be more. We're called to be more. And I pray that the Spirit guides me to be not who I was, but to be who we're called to be. We've got a calling, people. We have a calling to share Jesus. To reveal to me that I could come to Jesus and be changed. Be changed in my unworthiness. Man, I was so unworthy. But I was reminded that I'm a son of God. I got up off my knees and he said, you're my son. Just like Daughter, your faith has made you well. All I needed was the healing touch of Jesus, just to get close enough to him, to touch his cloak, to hear a healing word, to hear him say, your faith has made you well. And I found that strength in someone else's witness. Someone else's witness. I heard stories from men Tell me about how Jesus had touched and changed their lives. How could I stand up and say he can't touch mine? How could Jairus leave Jesus be after he had just witnessed what he witnessed? Your daughter is dead. Leave him be. No way. No, I can't. I know what he, I've seen what he can do. I knew that Jesus was my only hope. Wasn't just my hope, he was my only hope. I want you to all hope in Jesus and trust in Jesus. Obstacles will come, right? This isn't, this isn't smooth sailing. There's no promise there. Doubters will say, leave him alone. It's hopeless. Doubters will say that to us. It's never hopeless. Our hearts may tell us we are not worthy, but Jesus knows and believes that we are. He still loves and embraces us in our unworthiness. Our patience will be tested as we wait for the promises of God. Today's reading from Lamentations tells us, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. 
It is good that one should wait for the salvation of the Lord. And lastly, don't let our expectations define who God is for us. Sometimes we don't see or we don't understand what God is doing. Many, many times we don't see and understand what God is doing. Trust and let God be God. Let God do what God does, and that's love us unconditionally. I want to end with a little message from some guy named Martin Luther. Maybe you've heard of him. Martin Luther says this. He says, Faith, a gift of God, a divine work in us which changes and makes us new. Faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace, so sure and certain that the believer would stake his life on it a thousand times. My friends, we can stake our life in God, on Jesus, on the Holy Spirit a thousand times. And isn't that the greatest news ever? Amen. If you could sing with us, great is thy faithfulness.
you'll please respond with the Apostles' Creed. And together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of abundance, you fill your church with a multitude of gifts. Sustain those among us who feel they are not valued. Open our hearts to the wondrous breath of all who call upon your name. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, your goodness abounds. Multiply the fruits of the earth and rescue it from our wastefulness. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, you reign in steadfast love. Bring peace between nations ravaged by war or strife and illuminate paths of justice and freedom for those who lead them. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, your touch brings healing and your word revives us for life. Hear our prayers for all who are in need and for doctors, nurses, and health care workers who provide care. Turn wailing into dancing and weeping into joy. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you gather us at your table of plenty. Where there is hunger among us, open our hands. Where we are indifferent to the needs of others, open our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, great is your faithfulness. We remember in thanksgiving our beloved dead, who with all the saints sing without ceasing in your realm of glory. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves in all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share that peace.
Yeah, come here, sweetheart. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> there you go, guys. Boys and girls. Good job. Thank you, thank you, good job. Please pray with me. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us. Strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. indeed holy almighty and merciful god you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory in the night in which he was betrayed jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body broken for you in the same way after supper he took the cup and again he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember us in your reigning and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen you may be seated christ has set the table with more than enough for all come
body of Christ broken just for you. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. Happy birthday. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ and it is broken just for you. Welcome. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. And this is the body of Christ broken just for you. In the body of Christ broken just for you. Amen. The body of Christ broken just for you. The body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ is broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. Friend, the body of Christ broken just for you. Sammy, the body of Christ broken just for you. Laura, the body of Christ broken just for you. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. You don't take it yet. 
that right? You don't take communion yet, right? Jesus loves you, honey. You're about ready, I can tell. This is the body of Christ broken just for you. And again, if you could pray with me, Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you could all please stand. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. You can join now in, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Go in peace. This is where discipleship begins. Thanks Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Thank you.